Hello grade 11 and grade 12 chemistry students. In this video, we're going to look at this tricky acids and bases question. Look at the last question. It's out of seven marks. We have to identify an unknown metal. We're working with titrations where my one solution, my acid is in excess. There's two reactions. These are the sorts of things that you can get in an exam. So let's jump right in. But if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe for more videos like this, more teacher tips and, you know, help with your exams. Let's go. Our first question is a definition. And as I always tell you, you need to study your definitions off by heart. They're the easiest two marks you'll ever get. So concentration is the amount of solute per liter of solution. And if you ever forget the definition, just remember the formula. It's the amount of solute or the number of moles of solute per, when we say per, we are dividing per liter of solution. Remember, one liter is equal to one cubic decimeter. 8.2.2 is a basic three mark question. You have to get this right in the exam. It says calculate the number of moles, which is N, baby N, of hydrochloric acid present in 100 cubic centimeters of the solution. You have to be aware that cubic centimeters is a measure of volume, but we need to convert that to cubic decimeters, which we'll do in a second. So we want N, we have V. If you read this top sentence up here, they tell you that a school lab has 100 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid solution, and they tell you the concentration. So these are the variables that I have. Remember, you need to convert to cubic decimeters. To do that, we divide by 1,000. So we've got 0, 0,1 cubic decimeters of my volume. And they want to know the number of moles. So the formula that we use will be this formula over here. Please be careful to write the formula exactly as it is on the formula sheet before you rearrange it. You have to. You get a mark for doing it exactly as it is on the formula sheet. Please don't make the mistake of writing this formula. Oh my goodness, I see it so often. That is not the correct formula. So formula first, substitute. So we're looking for N. Volume is 0, 0,1. Then we solve for N by multiplying these two. And we get 0, 0,09. Remember your unit? Mole. Without your unit, you don't get an answer mark. Now, reading and understanding and interpreting the next part of the question is so important because it gets quite confusing. So you need to visualize it as well. We start off with HCl. We worked out the number of moles. Now, I wrote there the moles of HCl at the start. They tell you that they take this HCl solution and they allow it to react with 3.5 grams. So that's the mass of an unknown metal carbonate. Now remember, this is the base in the reaction. It is a metal carbonate, M. This M over here does not represent an element. It represents an unknown. So they could have even used X, if you know what I mean. It could have been like X, CO3. In other words, this is a metal. It's one of the metals on the periodic table, but we don't know what it is, okay? Unknown metal carbonates according to this balanced chemical equation. They balance it for you and everything, but we don't know what this compound is. So what a lot of students will try and do is they'll try and convert this over here to number of moles. But we can't because how am I going to convert something to number of moles using this formula? Because if I have mass, this would be the formula that I use. If I don't know what the molar mass is because I don't know what the compound is. Okay, let's carry on reading. So we're reacting hydrochloric acid with this unknown metal carbonate. This is the base. And what ends up happening is they end up finding that the hydrochloric acid solution is in excess. This is so important. What this means is that this acid at the start, these number of moles of acid at the start, not all of that will react in reaction number one. Some of it will react. The leftover, they tell you, the excess, the leftover, is then neutralized by sodium hydroxide in a second reaction. There's two reactions taking place. You can see that HCl is appearing in both of them. The reason why is because the HCl that I start with, this over here, some of it is used in reaction number one when HCl reacts with the unknown metal carbonate. Then the leftover, the excess HCl, the leftover, the HCl in excess, is neutralized in reaction number two with sodium hydroxide. So HCl and sodium hydroxide. 
So basically, of this 0, 0,09, some of it will be used in reaction 1, some of it will be used in reaction number 2. And they want to know, determine by calculation the symbol of unknown metal M. So this is the journey that we're going to go on, see if you can follow me. In order to work out the molar mass, the symbol of metal M, they say the symbol of unknown metal M. The only way we're going to do that is if I know the molar mass of that compound. Remember, to get molar mass, I need number of moles. I need number of moles. Once I have number of moles of this unknown compound, I can work out the molar mass of this unknown compound. But in order to get moles of the unknown compound, I need to know how many moles of HCl reacted in the first equation. Remember I told you that some of the HCl is going to react in the first equation. Not all of it. So not all of this. Only a bit of it is going to react in the first equation. If I can figure out how much, so how much of the 0, 0,09, how much of that actually reacts in the first equation. If I know that, if I know the moles of HCl in the first equation, I can use a mole ratio to get the moles of this unknown compound that reacts in the first equation which will then allow me to get the molar mass of the unknown compound and therefore I'll be able to figure out what this unknown metal is. But in order to work out how many moles of HCl react in the first equation, I first need to figure out how many moles of HCl react in the second equation. So we're actually going to start by the second equation and work backwards. Once I know how many moles of HCl react in the second equation, I can work out how many moles of HCl react in the first equation, and then I can work out how many moles of my unknown metal carbonate reacted. I hope you followed me. That is very, very complicated. But if you didn't follow me, hopefully as I'm doing it, it'll make sense. So my first step is I'm going to work out the number of moles of NaOH reacted in the second reaction. We know the volume of NaOH and the concentration. So the formula that makes sense for me to use is C is equal to N over V. Remember, this is for moles of NaOH. It's 0, 0,8. I'm looking for moles divided by 0, 0,025. You have to convert your volume to cubic decimeters dividing by 1,000. That gets me my number of moles of sodium hydroxide to be 0, 0,02 moles. Now, remember, that is of NaOH. But because I know that the in this second reaction, the moles of sodium hydroxide or the sodium hydroxide is neutralized, which means completely reacts with the HCl, I can use a mole ratio, so NaOH to HCl. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Those come from the big numbers here in front. And if I know the moles of NaOH that react, I therefore know the moles of HCl that react is the same. So that's the moles of HCl. And just keep in mind that that is the moles of HCl that react in the second reaction. But what we said earlier is that what was reacted in the second reaction was in excess from the first reaction. So basically, after reaction number one, what happened was the leftovers, which ends up being 0, 0,02, as we said, that reacted in the second reaction. So if you started off with 0, 0,09 moles, and where did I get that from again? I worked that out in the previous question. If I start off with 0, 0,09 and 0, 0,02 reacts in the second reaction, how many moles actually reacted in the first reaction? Well, you say this one minus this one. So we started off with 0, 0,09. In the second reaction, we had 0, 0,02, which means the difference was what was used up in the first reaction. That is moles of HCl. And just remembering this is very important because these sorts of questions pop up quite a lot in grade 11 and in grade 12. So in our case, it was what we had at the start, then what we had in excess that reacted in the second reaction. And that gives me, the difference gives me what was used in the first reaction. So now we are back to working with our first reaction. So working backwards is also a very common thing in these questions. Now that we know the moles of HCl that react in this equation, I can use a mole ratio to get the number of moles of this unknown metal carbonate that was reacted. So the two compounds that are in my mole ratio is MCO3. Remember M is basically, it represents an X. It's a placeholder, it's an unknown to HCl. And where do the numbers come from that go into my mole ratio? Well, there's an invisible one over there and there's a two over there. 
So it's a one to two ratio. So if I have 0, 0,07 moles of HCl that reacts with this unknown metal carbonate, then how do you get from two to one? You divide by two. So I need to divide this by two, half of that basically. So you get 0, 0,035 moles of the unknown metal carbonate that reacts. The other thing that we do know about this unknown metal carbonate, remember, is the mass of the unknown metal carbonate it was given. Baby M is 3.5 grams. And from that, if I know moles, if I know mass, I can work out molar mass, big M. It's this formula, as you should all be aware. Write it from your formula sheet as is. Substitute in. This is 0, 0,035. Baby M is 3,5. And big M is what I'm looking for. Remember, if you're solving for your variable, and your variables at the bottom of the fraction. These two things switch places. So it's 3.5 divided by 0, 0,035. And big M is therefore 100. Now remember, molar mass is measured in grams per mole. Now I'm running out of space here. I'm just going to finish this question on this side over here. What this is telling me is that the molar mass of the entire compound is 100 grams per mole. But remember, we already know a little bit of the compound. So we know that it contains a carbonate in it. We just don't know what this is over here. So what we need to do to work out what this unknown metal is over here is we need to work out the atomic mass of this metal over here. We need to basically then take 100, which is the molar mass of the total compound, and minus the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, minus the atomic mass of three oxygens, which is 16 times 3, and we get 40 grams per mole. That is the mass of metal M. Let's look at the periodic table to see which metal corresponds with an atomic mass of 40. If you look at the periodic table, we're looking for a metal. Remember, metals are on this side of the table. We're looking for something that has an atomic mass of 40. I hope you know that it is calcium over there, 40. You have to make a conclusion. So therefore, metal M is calcium. I hope you enjoyed that more difficult question. Please let me know in the comments below what else you would like to see. And check out the playlist link below for more difficult questions like that one. Bye, everybody.